Hello and welcome to the debate. Today's topic is COVID-19 and the New Zealand government's approach to tackling it. We have the privilege today of being joined by New Zealand's two most prominent commentators on the pandemic response, each with very different views on the matter. Our first guest needs no introduction, but I'll give him one anyway. He's a self-taught expert on epidemiology, economics, the public health system, political science, broadcasting, and hindsight. Uh, from News Talk ZB, Mike Hosking, thank you for joining us. And his opponent in this debate has very similar qualifications, but is joining us via the medium of time travel. Welcome to the show, Mike Hosking, from like six weeks ago. G'day, G'day to you both. Uh, let's jump right into it and pass Mike. I'd like to start with you, if I may. You're, of course, coming to us from a time when New Zealand has less than 30 confirmed cases of COVID-19 and no deaths recorded. How would you like to see our government tackle this very real threat? The simplicity in the answer is in this particular question. Why isn't this country locked down as in now? already. The government are too slow, no one seems to be listening. All of this is unfolding, it's all going in the same direction. It's just not happening fast enough. It's all heading to an obvious point, locking the country down. Why are we waiting for whenever, when the call is right now? Now turning to you present day, Mike, I hope you don't mind if I call you that. You and I now both know that uh, less than a week later, the government did exactly what past Mike is suggesting and lock the country down. What are your views on the Prime Minister's decision? She defended the potential charge of overreaction. We don't want to confuse reaction with overreaction, she said. That's because that's exactly what she did do. She overreacted. The 1,000 beds empty is proof of that. The ICU units that have barely been bothered is proof of that. The economic carnage is proof of that. How many now see the health obsession, given the numbers, as over the top? How many see the economic wreckage as simply too large? Past Mike, what do you say to present day Mike's suggestion that lockdown is an overreaction? Is this an overreaction? I mean, what's the worst that can possibly happen to an overreaction? You were wrong with an abundance of caution. I doubt in the fullness of time, and China and the various other success stories of this crisis show us this, that you will be thanked for procrastinating. You stand a far better chance of being thanked for appearing over eager. Well, I don't hear your opponent saying thank you. Uh, past Mike, given that we've got so few cases at the time you're speaking to us, do the numbers really support such drastic measures as the, lo the lockdown that you're advocating? Numbers are only going one way. Look at the charts. Talk to the epidemiologists. You add cases by ones and handfuls, then you add them by tens, then you add them by hundreds. We are tens. Look at the charts of all of the countries in trouble. They all tell the same story. President Day, Mike, can these expert projections that past Mike is talking about really be relied on? The first question to ask is, why this modelling? Is it right? How do we know? Are there those who are expert in their field who argue modelling like this is pseudoscience? Yes, there are many disease. Every year, heart disease claims 6,000 lives, one every 90 minutes. We're not crashing the economy for that. Overall, we had over 33,000 deaths a year. By the way, those deaths that year were the highest rate in 25 years. You won't remember the alarm because there wasn't any. Well, that might be because heart disease isn't spread by a highly contagious virus, but be that as it may, if you believe the lockdown was an overreaction, uh, whose example do you think we should be following now? Rome opened some shops this week. Rome, for goodness sake. Huge swathes of Europe stepped into the light this week. Spain sent hundreds of thousands of people back to work this week. That's before you get to Australia, who have been doing what we are about to do ever since they locked down their country. And past Mike, turning back to you, which country's response do you believe has been the gold standard? China has given us, of course, the answer. Not necessarily in a way we find comfortable, but the numbers don't lie. They are largely out the other side by locking their country down. Present day Mike referred to what Rome and Spain are doing now. Uh, what stock would you put in the European response? Europe is all the evidence you need as to what happens if you don't act fast. We look at Britain. Boris swore black and blue. Herd immunity was right until he was wrong. He swore keeping schools open was right until he was wrong. He swore keeping pubs open was right until he was wrong. Our government will tell you, oh, they have community transmission. We most likely have community transmission. Your rebuttal present day, Mike, do you think the British comparison is a fair one? Trouble with that was those countries aren't us. Britain was one of the examples, and if you compare Britain to us and even begin to think they're remotely similar, there is no hope for you. Strong words. Uh, 
Sounds like we just have time for one last question. Please keep your responses brief. You are both well known for your negative views of Jacinda Ardern's government. What blame do you place on them in all this? Uh, pass, Mike. You first, please. The trouble is part, well, in part, is the government. The government basically are useless at project management. The government can't do stuff. They talk about stuff. A lot of talk, they don't do stuff. I and present day, Mike? The numbers simply don't lie. In their obsession to eliminate that word again, eliminate the virus, they have failed to accept our lockdown and have simply gone too far. There you have it. An indecisive, do-nothing government that has made a knee-jerk decision and done far too much. We are certainly living in strange times. Gentlemen, thank you both for joining us and may God have mercy on us all. See you next time.